Oh my god. That has to be the darkest Scrubs dream sequence out there. Hi, my name is Ed Hope, your friendly neighbourhood junior doctor, and I've still been loving the Fake Doctors Real Friends podcast, so today we're gonna do another Scrubs reaction. Now, the last one I did was My Student, and a bunch of you recommended this episode, kind of a spiritual successor to it, called My Cabbage. So here it is, season five, episode 12. My defense, Keith's a decent kisser, and anyone waking up that way would let out a pleasure moan. Same thing happened to me in college. Really? What guy drunkenly kissed you while you were sleeping? And it was at that moment that Turk and I remembered the incident we managed to block out for 12 years. Uh, you okay with us not hanging out for a couple of weeks? What happens at college stays at college. Cabbage! Yes, sir. yes, sir! Oh, no, Mark, I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to Cabbage. Well, my last name is Cabbage. I know that, but I've nicknamed you Wolfman because of your keen sense of smell. And your ridiculously <laughs> hairy torso. Now. So it looks like Wolfman here, as JD has named him, is suffering from perhaps some kind of hypertrichosis. So abnormal hair growth over his body. This quite cruelly used to be referred to as werewolf syndrome. Hypertrichosis, not to be mistaken for hirsutism, which is another type of excessive hair growth. Hirsutism is much more common and is excessive hair growth on the face neck, chest, thighs, so in the male distribution of body hair, but abnormally occurring in a female, most commonly associated with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Dr. D, is the IV supposed to leak like this? Well, yes and no. Mostly no. Really, really all no. But don't worry, I got your back. First thing is, take a little nipper yourself. <laughs> oh, got some on you, look out! Okay, that's some of the fun that you can have. But no. This is pretty accurate, not being able to put up an IV drip. Normally when you teach medical students, a bunch of them will end up getting wet shoes. This is because either they pierce through the bag or they don't close off the valve of the giving set. The valve is open by default, so I think the manufacturers have done that on purpose to stitch up a bunch of medical students every year. Also, I have actually tasted normal saline before, not on a ward. <laughs> just did a teaching session, and as you can imagine, it's pretty darn salty, so it's 0.9% sodium chloride, 0.9% salt, so about a third as salty as seawater, so it's not nice to have a little nip yourself, like JD said. Sorry, they needed help with the shooting victim downstairs. Lies will get you nowhere, Keith. I'm covered in his blood. That could be anyone's <laughs> blood. Here's the gunshot victim from downstairs. Hey, look, my blood. That's not your blood. Yes, it is. Quiet time. <laughs> Keith demonstrating the reason why we wear scrubs, just in case we get bodily fluids on us. In reality, Keith should have been wearing an apron or a gown to prevent this level of exposure. We don't like having blood on us in case it gets into breaks in the skin or transferred to our eye when we're taking our clothes off. But although not happened to me, I can imagine you can get into situations where you just get caught out. Either way, he shouldn't be walking around the hospital like covered in blood like a doctor at a Halloween party. Everybody's favorite patient, Mrs. Wilk, is going home today. I'm sure not gonna miss this food. Well, the nurses and I got you this. Huh? Oh. You should see the size of the stationery store. <laughs> <laughs> that was so. Doctors and nurses buying presents for patients. I don't think I've seen that before. It's generally the other way around. We get gifted very generously from patients and their family, mainly cards and snacks. Although I did once have to buy a patient a newspaper every day because they couldn't afford it. Although annoyingly. They only like to read the Daily Mail, so I had to buy the Daily Mail. <laughs> Not a fan of that newspaper. Three infection spreads in the hospital. Your breath. That doesn't make sense. Uh, don't care. Look, infection <laughs> can start with a simple sneeze. And then a handshake. Perhaps an accidental collision. and a simple touch on the shoulder. And just like that, you have a patient in trouble. Mm -hmm. Very good visual public service announcement on the importance and the danger 
of hospital acquired infections. So here we're seeing examples of fomites here, so surfaces that we touch that we spread infection, and so highlighting the importance of hand washing within the healthcare setting. But you know, given the pandemic, also highlighting the importance of hand washing in our everyday lives. Although actually with COVID spread, it's primarily through breathing particles in. Chinatown is awesome. <laughs> And then Todd here showing, I think, how disease can be spread via sexual transmission. Keith, I realize you'd like to be at your grandmother's funeral on Saturday. Heck, we all would. But you can't just take a day off whenever you feel like it. And how come Cabbage got Saturday off so he could go see King Kong? Because, Keith, Cabbage is an ape enthusiast. <laughs> A bit of a light hard way to highlight quite an important issue actually, the sacrifice you have to make in your personal life and I know that's not just in medicine, many careers will have that element to it. And I haven't really heard of anyone struggling to get time off for you know, a close family member's funeral but you know, we've all had to make sacrifice along the way. Mr. Mr. Burton, hey! <laughs> Now, in a few minutes, I'll be coming to get you for your aorta bifem bypass surgery. And if there's anything we can do for you, just... So a little bit of jargon busting here. So an aorta bifem bypass surgery. Similar to the operation we talked about in my last scrubs reaction, this is a vascular operation we do for people who have critically narrowed or blocked iliac blood vessels, the one that branch from the bottom of your abdominal aorta. And when this happens, we don't get enough blood supply to our legs. The cause of this narrowing is due to atheroma, so fatty deposits in the blood vessel wall associated with smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes, and poor diet. So one of the really last resorts is for a vascular surgeon to go in and bypass this blockage with a graft, in this case, from the aorta to both of the femoral arteries, hence the name of the procedure being an aorto bifemoral bypass. Focus. Well, I can't just pick one of them out to torture. Then dump on all of them. I'm sure they deserve it. I mean, let's face facts, you are their teacher. How competent can they be? Actually, just this morning, one of them had trouble with an IV. Yesterday, one of them made a diagnosis off a backwards x-ray, and last week... The backwards x-ray thing. I think this is a bit of self-deprecation from Scrubs, knowing that the x-rays back to front on their title credits. But funny thing is, I reviewed maybe 15 or 20 episodes of TV shows, and we have actually seen backwards x-rays in Scrubs, although that was probably deliberate. House, which definitely wasn't deliberate, and recently in Casualty, Two, I can gladly report it's way more difficult to do that in real life because now we don't actually use physical radiographs, we have them on computer, so they're automatically the right way around. And last week, one of them made a patient septic when he confused a suppository with a Mike and Ike. Stellar. Confusing a suppository with a Mike and Ike? I'm not totally sure what a Mike and Ike is. So let's find out, well whatever it is, it's gone up the back passage and made someone septic. <laughs> Okay, so it's chewing gum. All the Americans are probably like, how does this dude not know what a Mike and Ike is? And just to reassure you, you couldn't make someone septic by putting chewing gum up their bum. You'd just end up pooing it out. Regardless, don't try it. We're having a hard time too because their patient, Mr. Burton, didn't make it through surgery. We did everything we could for your dad. We are so sorry, Devin. Wow, okay, so the patient that was having the aorto bifemoral bypass has died. And people with these vascular problems in their iliacs, the problem is not going to be confined to just these arteries. It's going to affect the blood vessels all over their body, so around their heart, their brain, their kidneys. And this would be a major contributing factor to that mortality rate. Or a sad face next to your name. One sad face and you are gonzo. And I want to warn you. I write my sad faces pretty darn sad. Allow me to demonstrate. Dr. Clark, may I borrow your pen? Not going to happen. I had to strangle a nurse to get this clicky top. Please, I'm in the middle of a very threatening speech. Return this pen or die painfully. <laughs> Weirdly enough, this is pretty darn accurate. You never want to lose your pen, and when you do, oh my word. It's so annoying, you literally need it for everything. Even now, where loads of stuff is on the computer, a load of stuff isn't. A consultant also once told me that when you start as a doctor, you only ever need three things, a stethoscope, a phone, and a pen, 
a stethoscope to make you look like a doctor, a phone to call your consultant, and a pen to write down what they've said. So losing one of the three, that's not good. Around here again. <laughs> Having said that, <laughs> I've never had a bird take it. You said our father left us a note? Yep. Dr. Turk, give it to them. Elliot, I gave it to you. You have the note, you give it to them. And if you feel your credibility slipping away, you might have to excuse yourself for a moment. Excuse us for just one minute, <laughs> Derek. <laughs> okay, so I've never heard of losing a dead patient's note for their family. I, I don't think I've ever even heard of someone being given that type of thing, but patient stuff going missing happens all the time, particularly in the emergency department because they're kind of unplanned admissions. People have been transferred from an ambulance to the emergency department, then to another ward. So all type of things get missing, really important things as well. Patients' glasses, hearing aids, false teeth, shoes, walking sticks. They just tend to disappear. You know, so this is obviously extremely frustrating for patients and their relatives. Who tried to give Miss Meadows an ACE inhibitor? She's six months pregnant. She could have lost the baby. Of course, sometimes there's nothing you can do. That was me, sir. Sorry. Mm, okay, so an ACE inhibitor, so an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. Angiotensin converting enzyme is an enzyme involved in increasing your blood pressure. So by inhibiting the enzyme, we end up bringing your blood pressure down. So it's a very effective medication at treating hypertension, so high blood pressure. And so for that reason, it's very commonly prescribed. But as JD says, it's also a teratogen, so a medication that can damage the developing baby in utero, specifically damaging the baby's kidneys. Yeah, baby, we're on our way back right now. Junior and I just went to pick up a pumpkin. I'm gonna have to call you back. Look, somebody left a baby here. Well, he is kind of cute. Our baby's first bath. <laughs> oh, watch the head. <laughs> what? Come on, that was intentional! Charge him out, son! Charge him out! We are so damn proud of you, son. My little valedictorian. <laughs> ah! Put him back together, baby! No! Oh, Mom? Dad? What? Dude, you all right? You're gone for a really long time. You're gonna be an awful father. <laughs> oh my god. That has to be the darkest Scrubs dream sequence out there. Do me a favor and think back on all those mistakes that your interns made and tell me this. Who made them? Hey, Dr. D, is the IV supposed to leak like this? I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at here. Don't worry, you're gonna feel much better once I insert this suppository. <laughs> well, you can see how the Mike and Ike suppository situation <laughs> went wrong. Why the hell is there chewing gum on the sterile trolley? Also, with a suppository going up the bum, you really should have the blinds closed there. You know, not just for patient dignity, but anyone walking in the ward there might get a bit of a shock to their eyes. Hey, Jason, uh, we need to talk. Look, you're, you're not progressing as fast as the other interns, and you've been making a lot of mistakes lately. I know what you're gonna say. I really am suspended for two weeks. But I promise I'll do much better when I come back. Yeah, about coming back. Yeah, so Cabbage here, really struggling. I've seen a lot of students and young doctors in this position. There's no real such thing as a suspension. You can get suspended, but it, it doesn't tend to be for little mistakes like this. I know they have significant patient impact. We all do make mistakes as doctors, and if there is a pattern of behavior here, you'd really be offered additional training, particularly this is very new in 
Cabbage's career here. It's not like he's done anything dishonest or intentional or you know criminal activity outside of medicine. They're the things that are going to get you suspended and or even struck off. And it certainly wouldn't happen in a situation like this with just a doctor doing one on one. There'll be much more of a formal process, as as you probably can imagine. You've always been really nice to me. I just want to say thanks. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, yeah, man. Crap, man, cabbage. He's broken the first rule of medicine, do no harm. And Scrubs, as always, beautifully done. We've gone full circle here to highlight the importance of infection control in healthcare settings. So this patient due to be discharged is now at risk of a hospital acquired infection, perhaps something like MRSA or Klebsiella. The concern with these strains is that in the hospital, they're often resistant to a bunch of antibiotics. So it's a double whammy. You get people who tend to be more vulnerable because they've been in hospital and these infections are more difficult to treat. So there you have it, another fantastic episode of Scrubs. And as always, so funny so well written in terms of the arc of the show. They cram so much into what, like a 20 minute episode and the themes that they bring out from healthcare are just absolutely bang on. I hope you've enjoyed my breakdown and reliving this episode with me. If there's any other episodes you want me to look at, please leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you for your continuing support on the channel. It means so much, all the likes, all the shares. If you haven't subscribed already, then you could do so right now. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon.